Sam was born in September 1967 in the Gorkha district of Nepal. His family lived in a remote village eking out a living raising corn, millet, and vegetables. When Sam entered the seventh grade, Preb Stritter, a 60-year-old Peace Corps worker, was assigned to teach at his school. Preb's fierce dedication to educating her students was an inspiration to Sam, and she changed his path forever. She wanted to sponsor me to go to college. Uh, then she introduced me with Olga uh, back in 89, even before Nepal Youth Foundation was formed. And then I started to receive a scholarship uh, through Olga. I did my undergraduate in physics, chemistry, and mathematics. But by the time I finished my final examination, I, I thought, okay, that's it. <laughs> I, I didn't want to continue science. You know, I realized that I'm a different person. So I wanted to do uh, more in, in a teaching or in, in, in social work. Sam graduated from the University of East Anglia in 1992 with a master's degree in international child welfare. And in January of 95, Olga invited him to join NYF. Sam not only had a new job he loved, he found a wife as well. Sajani had been a dedicated volunteer at NYF for years before Sam came on board. Sam and Sajani developed a friendship cemented by their mutual commitment to Nepali children, and in 2007, they were married. We never make a project a time-bound project. We stay there until the problem is solved or resolved, or there's a safe exit. That's, that's the beauty of NYF. First, first we started a scholarship, then we had uh, you know, some disabled children and the homeless children, they needed a house, so J House was created. When we were running J House and K House, started a boarding school program, and then, you know, when the, some children did not need boarding but needed education, we started a larger education program. And then when we started to deal with their adolescents, then we thought that, okay, you know, the counseling program is needed. And when we were helping children in, in hospitals, we came to know the, the problems of the malnutrition among the children. That evolved the nutrition center, you know, the, all the NRHs. And when we were doing NRHs, we came to know about the HIV AIDS infected children. We started the you know, New Life Center. So all the programs have connection. In November of 1999, Sam read a newspaper article about parents in the Taru community of Western Nepal selling their daughters as kitchen slaves. The girls were called Kamlari, and some were sold as young as six years old. We brought in 37 girls in the first year, in 2000, January. And the next year, we, we could bring in 150 girls. We moved from one village to another village to another village. And the number kept increasing every year. And then we did the survey. More than 17,000, close to 20,000 girls must have been sold out from the, from the region, the five districts in the far west. There were so many girls working as indentured servants Sam knew NYF could not solve the problem alone. He looked for other NGO partners, but realized that ultimately, rescuing the girls and educating them was the responsibility of the state. I filed the law case in the Supreme Court demanding that law enforcement should be in place and the girls to be rescued and supported through because as the result of the weak law enforcement, lives of the thousands of girls have been destroyed. The Supreme Court gave a verdict to government, but the government did not listen enough. So we had to bring in, you know, five, six hundred former Kamlari girls to Kathmandu. And they marched on the street of Kathmandu for three days. And as a result, the government allocated $1.6 million for the Kamlaris. And that was a big success for us. We said, wow, okay. Now we can rescue as many girls as we can. We don't have to worry about money. The Indentured Daughters program rescued more than 13,000 girls and completely eradicated the Kamlari practice. The girls went on to create their own NGO to promote women's rights, and they created a co-op that is helping thousands of girls establish small businesses.
in 2014, a generous donor made it possible for NYF to purchase three acres of land just outside of Kathmandu. Now, Sam had the opportunity to realize a dream that he and Olga had shared for years, to build their own children's village. Construction got underway in 2015, and the kids decided to call the village Olga Puri, which means Olga's little oasis. Sam's science and math skills helped him design Olga Puri to be self-sustaining in every way possible. Well water, solar power, and the farm provides enough food to feed everyone. There are four residences for the children and a world-class vocational school at the north end of the property. Olga Puri represents everything NYF stands for. Freedom, health, shelter, and education. Education is the only ticket to get out of the vicious cycle of this poverty for these kids. They will carry an, or a sense within themselves that, you know what, I was supported to get education by somebody else. And it's my responsibility to help somebody else too. And they will help to improve the lives of many, many other children. That's what we hope.